Today, we're talking about masking, specifically how to mask your logo into your YouTube videos. But you might be wondering, Stephen, what is masking? Well, let's just pause right there and look at what just happened on screen a second ago. As I walked into frame, my logo, which was already on screen, disappeared with the movement of my body. It's almost like I was walking in front of it. And I love adding this to videos because I think it adds a really interesting element and it's just fun to watch. So I wanna explain how I do that today in a very simple breakdown of what masking is and how you can use that in your own videos. I'll be demonstrating this in Premiere Pro, but if you use a different piece of software like DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut, you can use the same principles that I'm talking about here because there are masking tools available in those programs as well, and the general concept is the same. But before we get into that, I'm gonna level with you. I'm not really feeling my hair today kind of humid outside, a little all over the place. So, one sec. <laughs> it worked? Okay, so now that we're hopping into Premiere, in this timeline you can see right now I only have the video clip from the intro and my logo in the timeline. And if we play that back right now, you'll see when I begin to walk into frame, the logo is just on top of me still. So in order to actually make that effect look good, uh, we're going to start by going up into our opacity tool in the top left in effect controls. And we're going to look at these three tools right here, the ellipse mask, the polygon mask, and then the just free draw mask option. Uh, I generally use the free draw option because it gives me a lot more control over what the mask actually looks like. So we're going to click on that tool and we're going to basically just using the pen, create a mask point by point all the way around my logo. So now that we have that drawn, I'm gonna go back over to the effect controls panel and I'm going to actually invert it right here by clicking inverted. So now you can't see the logo on screen. Basically that drawing that we just made is a, a cover on top of the logo. But we don't want it to start there. We're actually going to drag it out and move it all the way over here off screen. Now that we have the mask drawn, let's look at our clip again and see what exactly it is we're going to have to do in order to make that mask appear natural as I walk onto screen. Okay, great. So right here, we're gonna look really closely now. I'm basically gonna go frame by frame and look for the exact moment where my body starts to overlap with the logo because that is where we're going to start with the mask. And it's right about on that frame, right about, we'll, we'll say right there uh, is where we want to see the mask start to do some work. So we're gonna go back over, we see it right here. We're gonna bring our mask over and I'm actually gonna punch into this a little bit more because it's gonna take some, some pretty uh, some detailed work. So the important thing to note when you're creating a mask transitionally like this is that the most important thing to do is keep your lines straight with the, the subject or the object that is going to be covering whatever it is that you want to cover or uncover. So in this case, we're obviously covering my logo and we can see that my arm is the first thing to intersect with the Z in my last name. So we're actually going to just kind of change the way this mask looks a little bit and pull these points over. So that way it's actually lined up with my arm. Awesome, and now part of the Z is covered. Before we go any further, we actually have to go back to our effect controls panel and click the little clock next to mask path. That way, as we go through the mask for the next couple of minutes and move it frame by frame, it's going to track with us. So every time we move it, it's gonna make another keyframe and record the location that we moved it to. That way we don't actually have to keep clicking back and forth and, and marking where it is. It's just gonna do that automatically for us. We're gonna click back down onto our actual mask path. Let's make that active again. So there we go. So now anytime we move forward a frame and we move the mask with my body, you can see another keyframe is created over here. Well, actually, you can't see it because it's so close together, it just looks like a stacked keyframe, but trust me, it's not a very glamorous process, but we're just gonna keep doing what I just did. We're gonna go frame by frame and move the mask over 
adjusting the, the individual anchor points of the, the mask every now and then. But for the most part, my arm seems to be kind of keeping the same arc the entire time, which is great because that makes it a lot easier. And now that we are starting to see my arm kind of bend a little bit, that's when we can really start to finesse the mask a little bit more. And just again, make sure that it is lined up with my arm because that's going to be uh, really key in making the mask look natural in playback. I'm actually gonna drag another point over here right now just so we have another, another spot to work with just to kind of match the curvature of my hand right there. We're almost done with the mask now, and again, just to reiterate, really trying to make sure all of our anchor points are really lined up uh, with my arm, because my arm is the leading thing that is covering my logo. So again, just very slowly but surely, it's kind of a, a painstaking process <laughs> sometimes. It feels really slow, but uh, the more you practice it, the better you will get at it, and the faster it will be too. Awesome, looks like we're just about done, yep. That should be the last one. Okay, so now that the mask is complete, let's start from the beginning again and just see how it's looking so far. Looks pretty good. That's, for the most part, I'd say just about how I would use it in the video. It's probably what you're gonna see when this video goes live. Uh, the one thing I will change a little bit is just increase the mask feather to 20. Um, just so there's a little less rigidity when my body hits the logo for the first time. Uh, the feather will just allow a little more breathing room and make it feel a little more um, natural and a little, little less like it's like stuck to my arm and more like it's just kind of gradually disappearing. So, there you have it. That's how you mask your logo into your YouTube videos. If you found this useful at all, let me know in the comments below. If this is a technique that you've never used before, uh, I'm really excited to hear how y'all will start using it in your videos. Uh, but until then, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. You thought I was gonna walk out of the frame and my logo would appear behind me or something crazy like that. What is this, a video about masking your logo into your YouTube videos or something? My foot fell asleep at the end and that was really weird walking off camera. I didn't feel my left foot at all. Oh my God. Wait, do the logo now. Do it, do the logo. <laughs> this just became a very complicated edit. <laughs> Put it behind my head. Put it behind my head.